Hello, welcome to a new project. This is going to be using Python, the eBay API, JSON, and SQL. And if you're interested in which flavor, it'll be Postgres SQL. So let's begin. I've got on the screen here a initial description of the project. So it's going to be using the API. Check the documentation for any limitations of the APIs. There are some. So you could use it for mobile phones, electronics goods, sportswear, and so on. The concept remains the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to revisit the previous code, which you may have seen my other two videos on, e on YouTube. And we're going to look at the syntax. And in particular, we're going to pay attention to how we can use JSON rather than having to pass the XML with beautiful soup because there's no need to do that because what I've actually found more recently and I don't know I didn't do it before but by default the core response for JSON requests is XML format but you can specify NV or JSON as a response format if desired well if that's available then why not use that it makes a lot more, a lot more sense so um, that's Number three, what we're going to be doing then is actually once we've done all of our research and resurrected my developer API key. Now, whilst on the subject of that, if you don't have one, you can register for one for free. And you don't even need to have an eBay account or be an eBay buyer or seller. This is separate. This is the developer program. Um, now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using that key to make requests to the eBay finding API. Um, we're going to write the code. We're going to get some responses as JSON, hopefully. And then we're going to add the code into a database. And then we're going to do some price tracking. And we're going to do some queries and some... Uh, we're going to do some data analysis. Uh, as you can see, Pandas, Python, and SQL, which is... Uh, building upon what you've probably seen before if you've watched any of my other videos, in particular my Amazon price tracking videos. So with that being said, let's begin. Okay, some of you may be asking why use an API? Well, it's very much more structured data that you will be getting via the JSON response rather than if you use Scrapey or Beautiful Soup or requests or whatever. And I just thought I'd bring to your attention this question. So this is on the eBay Developers Program forum. And it explicitly says, using eBay in connection with using or accessing the services, you will not use any robot, spider, scraper, data mining tools, data gathering and extraction tools or other automated means to access our services for any purpose. So I think that's fairly clear they don't want you scraping and whether you'll get taken to court or not i don't know but obviously better to stay within the law isn't it so yet another good reason to use json and the api rather than scraping the pages themselves and you may have seen some sort of rather numpty like web scraping articles and videos on youtube of people using things like selenium so don't do that people okay so let's start writing some code new file so the first thing we want to consider is how and where we are going to store our api token key and how we're going to keep them safe because obviously we want to save our code to github and we don't want to publish the api key or accidentally upload it there now you could use a git ignore uh, file which is a good way but also um, belt and braces or as they say sand and cement let's also use um, load.env load to um, stop the information being exposed. You don't have to do it this way. You can use uh, the environment variables and use a .env file in the same directory as your project. But I'm going to use uh, python.env. So I believe I've still got this installed in VS Code, but I'm just going to check. So uh, let's just move that out of the way python-.emv and it looks like I didn't have it installed so there we go successfully installed python.emv now let's uh, let's put that into our code dot env import 
load underscore dot env. Okay, so this is where I need to just do a new file and I need to put in my secret API key. So I'm just going to put in uh, AP, API key equals. Okay, so as you can see over here, I've got a .env file and that contains uh, my variable name, which is API underscore key directly followed by equals and then i've pasted in my api key which i got from okay so now it's time to create our class so if we go in insert mode and then we shall say class ebay with a capital e underscore 21 and then we'll say object because it's not a subclass and then we will use def in it which is our constructor and then we will pass the api key constant to the object and also we will then say self dot api key equals api key so the instance has the uh, api key within it good and then so I think the next thing to do is actually just think about the structure of our code. So what are we actually going to be doing? We're going to be um, creating an object. Within that object, it's going to have various methods. Now, what methods do we need? We need a method to fetch the data, and then we need another one to pass it, and then we will need another one to call we may even have a separate file which will insert the data into uh, postgres sql so we've got in it so next we need probably a fetch and then a pass so <laughs> it's looking quite like scrapey isn't it if you're familiar with scrapey but um i assure you this is <laughs> okay well, there's no problem being influenced by scrapey it's a very good framework so um the fetch and let's say self and then we will just say pass here and then we will do def pass self uh we'll come back to this in a minute but just just to get the basic structure of the, the code and then what we will do is we will create our main driver so um main driver and we'll say um if Thunder name double equals main e equals eBay twenty one API underscore key. Then we'll say e dot fetch and we'll say e dot pass. And that should be good to run now. We can test it and just check our syntax and our code is okay. So let's just run that. And no errors. Um, yeah, I forgot. I, I didn't show you um, installing the eBay SDK. I don't think I did. Um, so yeah, pip install eBay SDK, successfully installed eBay SDK. If you don't install that, you'll get a module not found, no module named eBay SDK error see that so yeah you must do pip install ebay sdk good right so we've got the outline of our code now so we just need to go and um, start looking at the ebay documentation okay so i'm on this ebay sdk python which is the link that i got from looking at the developer tools and installing the sdk so um yeah Timotheus, official developer, and he's provided some samples, documentation, all the usual. So welcome to the Python eBay SDK, programmatic interface, blah, blah, blah. Right, quick example, import date time, import exception, import connection error, finding. So eBay SDK finding, import connection. So what we want to do is we want to try and establish a connection using our API key. Um, mine I first used over a year ago, so I want to check that it's still valid and still working. It says it is, but 
um, I need to prove it within my code. Um, so I'm going to copy all of this code and I'm going to put it into uh, the code that which we're writing. And I think I can pretty much just paste all of this into my fetch method. So um, I'm going to paste that in. And instead of this bit here, your app ID, it will be my, what I'm calling my API key. And it looks like we're doing a search for some Lego. And then what I'll do is I'll print response. Um, We'll print the response and then we should be good to go so um you also look in here you've got the trading class the finding shopping um so there's notes on all the other classes and i just noticed there's something about uh, migrating from sdk 1 to sdk version 2 and i cannot remember whether i'm my previous code used version 1 or version 2 and this is dated 13th of june 2020 so just bear in mind that older code may be using version one and you may get errors. So um, yeah, this that's why you need to use this video and refer to this because it's up to date. <laughs> so let's look, I've just pasted that code in with the magic of uh, filmmaking. And what I've done is I've pasted this whole block in, which is pretty much his code. And all I've done is I put in self.api key, which is what I get here, which is the API key, which comes with the class instance. And then I just have to pass the API key constant when I create my instance down here in the main driver. So if I run this, down here, you see, I get a response object. So that's so far so good, I believe. Response object. And next, we actually need to look at some documentation and see how we can actually use that response object. So um, that's going to be all of this here, developer.ebay.com forward slash dev zone forward slash finding. And Making a call, API reference, tutorials. Let's have a look at tutorials. And PHP, JavaScript. Okay, no Python. I think I remember from last time it was a bit thin on Python code, but um, eBay value price. To be honest, the syntax is pretty similar whichever language you use. So, um, that's why you need a YouTube video showing you how to do it. <laughs> I'm doing the hard work here. So, right, let's, um, let's cut to the chase and let's start seeing what we can extract. Right, so um, I've just had a sneaky look at the documentation and we need to just say uh, response.reply here instead of response. So the response just returned an object, which if we put... Uh, dot reply afterwards and run it check this out <laughs> there we go so the response object has returned all this so already i mean that's so much easier than web scraping and you can see it's it's all as um it's all as uh, json so we can convert that into a python dictionary and we can pass it so this is fantastic um Currency, US dollars, yeah, yeah, whatever. This is, um, if you remember from my other video, we'll have to go in and change the geographic location. Otherwise, it defaults to eBay US. Um, even got some emojis in there, amazing. Um, so, yeah, look, we've got all the links, condition display name, currency. You've got the link, the description postal code location so this is exactly what we want and this was very very quick so um all we need to do now really is uh, turn this into um into a dictionary and then we can play with it so let's get going with that okay so far so good so i hope you're all enjoying this so far and now we are going to look at getting the bits we want from the big response so i'm um, Back on, um, I found this, which is uh, ebaysdk.readthedocs.io. Welcome to the Python eBay SDK. 
seen all that already. So this is a code I actually put in. And looking at this, I think I can use response.reply dot search result dot item to give which will give me a list of the search results so what i've done is just put that in here for item in response dot reply dot search result dot item so that's a list and then within that list i'm just going to print the item title and the item selling status current price value, which again is, um, you can find all these in the developer PDF, which we'll go back and look at in a minute because we're gonna be needing to get a few more of these things. But just for now, just to demonstrate, let's run this. So these two new lines here, let's see what happens. There we go. So we've got the title and we've got the price. And I can't remember. Oh, we had loads more things. So we had uh, currency handling time, postal code. Oh, thumbnail at the gallery URL. Condition display names that was used. Well, we can get a lot more things from that. So um yeah let's go over and look at the documentation and see what other keywords and values we can extract okay so uh where are we we're looking at um how to get additional additional bits of information from from our response by picking out certain keys and values so what I've been looking at is how to get some additional information such as the item condition. Now, depending on what your original call is, I've used find items advanced. So I can only pick out keys and values that were retrieved by find items advanced. Um, and here you see seller info. So you can also find completed items, items by category, keywords, products, find items only by stores. But obviously I chose to do this one, find items advanced. So I can only extract keys and values that are returned by that query. Um, so as we go down, let's go past all this and we'll see argument, type, occurrence, meaning, and if we scroll down a bit to uh, category ID. So how do we actually use this? Well, what I'll show you is you need to bear in mind the level that you're at within the um, keys and values. So, so also you may want to choose something other than item condition or uh, this is easier to uh, <laughs> Yeah, there we go. So, um, total page is search result. There we go. Search result. So, search result dot item, search result dot item dot attribute, search result item dot auto pay, charity ID compatibility, and here we go. Condition display name dot. Con so we will keep. We will always need to in a print statement. We'll be need to reference it from this level down item and then everything past that so we also wanted to extract um let's say we wanted to get the country so or well, they're all in the us aren't they so um let's finding okay let's find if it's got buy it now available so uh we need to get that and let me just paste that in there. So just going to uncomment that because I've tested that and I know that works. So um, paste that line in. Didn't want to do that. So let's do print, and then we'll do an f string. 
and we want to say buy it now available and then curly braces actually I need to move my um Yeah, move my new line down there. So then inside, what we need to do is we need to say inside the curly braces, we need to say, um, so always start with item because we're within the search result dot item part of the uh, response. So we say item dot listing info and it's case sensitive so I just need to be careful that uh, info dots by it now available and if this goes to plan um Let's check that before we run it. Then we should buy it now. Available. Force, 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 force. Are any available buy it now? <laughs> they all look to be force. Wow. Okay, let's get some more. So hopefully you're getting the idea. So let's um, go back to the documentation. Um, okay, let's see if we can get watch count. That would be a good one. So, let's copy that. Just park it in our code for reference. And we'll do the same thing again as we did here. So, Search result is not defined. Okay. Ah, I left that in. That's you can't you can't leave that in. Try again. Oh, no attribute watch counts. Hmm. Back to documentation. So I'm just uh, looking at the documentation and uh, what have we done wrong? I don't know why that's not working because there's nothing different on this one to the others. Listing info dot watch count. So that's something to be aware of. That gives us an error. Right, so I've put try except there and let's see if that works. There we go. So it silently skips over those. So you can now see we've got the number of watches. Um, buy it now available condition. So already we're starting to build up and um, uh, yeah, we want to get rid of the new line there, don't we? So. Okay, um, that's quite good progress, I think. So next we need to look at how we can specify our search criteria dynamically rather than just, we don't want to search for Lego. So we'll look at how we can pass um, the keywords as variables. Okay, so I just want to demonstrate um, what I've just written and then we'll go back and look at it. So 
I've, I've, I've written uh, I've written in arg so that the program takes command line arguments, which we'll run it with Lego just because we know that works. They were using Lego, so let's go for plural anyway. So let's check it still works, and it does. And let's run it again, but we'll instead of Lego, we'll say house is. And we've got an error. Wow. Oh, because you can't have condition with a house. Right, let's try something else then. So, um, hmm, iPhone. Yeah. So, condition works on Lego, iPhone. Let's try something else. So, uh, Screwdrivers. And again, it works there. So let's try, instead of houses, let's try property. I don't think property is, has, yeah, it doesn't have attribute condition. So if we go back to the code and I'll show you what I did to add the arguments. So you have to import sys. Yeah. And what I did was I added um, st search term as an additional um, parameter to pass to the init method to create when the class is instantiate the um, when you create an instance of the class. So self dot st self dot search term equals search term and search term is what you pass when you create it. So there we go in my main driver I say st equals sys.argv then one. It's always one because um, naught is the actual name of the program. So one is the argument that you pass to it. And there we go. And then you just use it when you create an instance of the eBay class, you just say, use the constant API key, and then you use the search term and the search term st just comes from that line above. And then that is what comes from what you type in. So we appear to have it working, albeit it breaks when we look at houses. So I think we are just going to comment out that for the time being, because the whole point of this program is to look for property. So uh, new terminal. And then we will say Python eBay 21.py and then houses. And there we go. We've got nice house on the lake with some flames. Um, housing with ejector fits nine millimeter Glock OEM. Is that a gun? And House of X powers. So again, it's too greedy. So we need to look at that next. So let's continue. Okay, so I've just run this again. And instead of putting houses, I just thought I'd try putting in property. And um, yeah, that was a bit more successful. Um, I'm based in the UK. The, the default is eBay.com, which is looking in United States, but uh, that's fairly trivial to uh, sort out. You just change the geographic um, code in your request. So we can look at uh, California property, Tennessee, 62.25 acres, Idaho. There we go. So we are finding it's just that uh, eBay is obviously not really a, a real estate listing site but they do happen to have some on there so um yeah i, I think um for the purposes of this i'm going to leave it on the property front as such because i've kind of proven beat with uh python ebay 21.py property we despite the uh, irrelevant ones we can actually use the api to find some property listings and um, yeah, the other thing I'd, I'd obviously go on and get would be the um, the links and some images. So 
Um, I think what I'm going to do now from this point onwards is I'm going to concentrate on some other type of listing or other category. So um, with respect to the properties, that's probably it really. Um, Say so the other thing I will need to do is go back and allow for multiple keyword arguments to the code rather than just one word. So I'm putting property here, but if I was to put um, uh, semi-detached, I would get an error. Or in fact, I wouldn't. Why is that? That's treating that all, as all one argument. Oh no, it's just taking semi. So it just takes the first word and it ignores the second because it's just taking um, with the index uh, here, it's just taking the semi uh, detached would be of index two. So there we go. Anyway, right, let, next, um, let's, let's choose another category. Let's get some additional information and then we'll move on to um, inserting it into a database. Uh, yeah, just a quick note before we go and look at another category. Um, yeah, the geographic location. So what you need to do is where you've got your connection and you pass it the API key, um, a config file, you can pass it a YAML file. And um, yeah, site ID. So site ID, and then if you're in England, you say eBay-GB. If you're in France, it would be eBay-FR. If you're in Brazil, it would be eBay-BR, and so on and so on. And you can look those up on the documentation. So um, I'll just show you that running just before we um, move on. So, and there we go. So it's run with the UK this time. And let's find some UK property. There we go, Orkney Islands, mm, Bulgaria. I'm guessing that's an English seller. Not really very much there anyway, but um, that doesn't matter too much because we're going to move on to looking at something else. So in actual fact, let's, instead of property, we can now look at, um, I don't know, let's look for chairs in the UK. And there we go. And um, yeah, there we go. UK, UK. So we're searching on eBay UK now because we've changed eBay We've added in site ID equals eBay GB. If you don't put it in, then it defaults to eBay dash US. I just thought I'd include the list of global IDs, the site IDs here for you as well. Okay, so I've added some extra items to this. So we've got item country, item listing info, end time, item URL. Um, I've added total items. And these are all these are all values which you can um, you can identify using the documentation. So let's uh, let's just run that. And because I don't want to use up my API quota today, I've had to try and think of some terms which won't get too many results. So if you just see, I've run this on um, Heighten, which is uh, it's getting me. Um, let's see how many results it's getting. Um, 36, which is not too bad. So I can do a few more tests before I use up my quota. So Highton was the name of a 1980s racing driver. And I don't know what else, but um, there we go. You see, I'm getting um, URL, end time, country, buy it now, title. So I'm getting five bits of information. And at the top, I'm also getting the the total number of items. So that's pretty good. So what we're going to be doing next is looking at how to insert these values into a database. And then we can move on to doing price tracking over a course of many days or weeks. Okay, so why do we need to use a database? You may think that's making things more complicated. You might be just used to using Excel and it may seem like a lot of work. The reason is, is because we need to look at historical data and the best way to match current data against historical data is having two tables and then we can compare and see where we get a match. So if you've looked at 
eBay after a listing has ended. You can see on this screenshot here, the listing you're looking at has ended. <clears throat> now, that is a problem because as of 2020, eBay have restricted the API from providing information about completed items. So you can no longer get the sold price using the API, which, uh, yeah, that the, if you want to get that, you need to use the trading API, I believe, which you need to be a registered partner. Um, you need to pay the money and, you know, jump through lots of hoops. So we don't want to do that. What we'll do instead, as you can see, I've had a question on um, my comments. How are you handling getting sold items? Waiting for the live listing to end, question mark? Not as such, no, because I'm not going to wait for it to end. What I'm going to do instead is make use of the advanced search feature. So on eBay, if you go into search, just below search, you've got advanced search. And I've just done an example here um, with an old computer console game because it then provided me with only a few results um, for testing. I only want a handful of results. So if you go to sold listings and tick that box and then go to your browser, well, you're still in the browser. So then make, make a search using sold listings and uh, whatever, you're, whatever you're searching for. You can then go up to the URL and to be honest, you may even be able to make this URL more compact, um, but it doesn't really matter because this is going to be within our script. So once it's there, it's there. Um, so you can see there grandstand plus 4,600 and complete. I think that complete is, uh, means that it's sold. So once you've got those, you then get a list, a list of completed items, which if you use requests, HTTP request Python module, then you can get this information and then we can, <laughs> we can pass it probably with beautiful soup or some equivalent. Um, if it's in a table, actually, we may look at using uh, pandas. Um, we can read from HTML and we can see if we can get table information. That would be better. But either way, we've got a list of sold prices then sold prices as a guide because then what I've done here is a little simulation. We've got selling. So that would be in the top table. We'd have a table of information from our API. So we would then have a table in our database. This is why we need a database. So we'd have selling prices, current selling prices in our table and then we could then do a join and where the current selling price is less than a previous sold price and we would do a join on the uh, on the model number so as you can see on the lower table that would be extracted from what i've just showed you with the advanced search and we would then store that in a separate table and bid, bid is, should say highest bid or selling bid. If you look on the eBay page where it's sold, it just says bid, bid as in past tense. So £16. And then we could then search through our current table, which is what the API provides us. And then we could see, I've highlighted in purple. So if you see the top row, um, the, just move my mouse, it'd be easy to see. Oh gone sorry about that there we go so 4600 there we see selling that'd be the currently selling for three pounds 23 currently selling for 12 pounds so if you're looking to buy something cheap then you could use this kind of system or if you're selling and you want to use the sold prices as a guide you could then go back and compare what you want to sell it for against sold prices. But really this would probably be better for trying to find some bargains because you can then instantly search with the API to find all of the current selling items 
and then look for where any of the current selling items are much less than the previously sold prices. What you'd also need to take into account, which I should have added into the first table, was I should also get, which I will do, um, time remaining. Because obviously if something's selling for £3.23 but the seven days remaining, it's pretty certain that that's going to go up. Whereas if there's uh, you know one minute left and the price is £12, or even if the one minute left and the price is £3.23, there's a good chance it may sell for less than £16, which is what the product is previously sold for. So if you wanted to buy something very cheaply and you know that it's likely to sell again for a higher price, um, then also that could be uh, something worth doing. So I hope I've tidied that up. And I thought I'd do this little database section before we go on and create the database, create the tables, just so you've got some understanding of why we need to do it, why we need to make a database, why we need to make two tables. And then afterwards, we'll go back and we'll get any additional information from the API. And in fact, then we'll just do a roundup of what we everything that we've done. And if there's anything in addition that we need to extract using the API. So I hope that's tidied that up. Okay, so what I've done is I've documented the setup of the database on the two tables and the installation of Postgres on my GitHub page. So if you go to RGGH, eBay API, Postgres, and you can find the README markdown for this. So I'm just going to log into my Raspberry Pi. So these are the instructions for, <laughs> for a Linux box. So um, if you're on Mac or Windows, then um, there'll be information out there that'll be similar. Um, and if you look at the book, which I just showed, the um, Practical SQL book, there'll be instructions there on how to install Postgres on Windows and or Mac OS X. So we've got onto the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check if we've got Postgres installed. If you haven't, you need to do this sudo apt get install postgresql and mine is already installed so i've got this message okay so um there we go it's already the newest version um so because i've got it installed i can straight away i can um sudo to, to postgresql user account and that will be what I work with. Ah. Right, okay, then PSQL, and now we are in, and we can create a new database. So create database, and I'm gonna call it eBay. There we go, let's create a database. And um, next thing I wanna do is I wanna create a table. So much like creating a database, the command to create a table is create table. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, um, if you're familiar with MySQL, then you'll be familiar with um, auto increment indexes. Within Py um, Postgres, it's called ID, um, so you have ID in serial. That will give you, I think it's up to about 2 billion, so that should be enough. So what I need to do here, ah, I need to connect. So slash c ebay you are now connected to the database you've got to connect you've got to choose your database and then connect to it so create table now i'm in ebay i'm gonna so if you're copying my code you obviously don't include the prompt so you need to go from here create table all across there copy paste create table if you see create table after you press return that's good it's created the table and um, what i you, if you don't know about the data types, you'll just need to check for what data types description. That'll be the description of the product from eBay. So, var car. 
you don't have to use text. Um, in fact, there's benefits to using varchar. So yeah, varchar, then in brackets, how many characters, the maximum number of characters. Um, PostgreSQL has a nice data type for um, money, which is called money. So the price is money, the postage will be money data type. These are the column names. And then you've got the data type second, and then you have a comma. So it's column name, data type, comma, column name, data type, comma. So it's just a space in between the column name and the data type. And then time underscore left, that's my column name, and then the space, and then the data type. And then you close the bracket, and then you have the semicolon at the end. So that's always what commits it. Then let's create our second table. So much the same. We've got API data, which obviously is what we get using the API. And then we'll be doing some more code to get the sold data into your course. So just going to make the table to start with. So we've got our two tables. Press enter, table created. Good. So let's just clear that. And um, ah, clear doesn't work. I thought I was in Numbash. Right. Next, um, if you do, let's just check the tables are there. So slash uh, backslash DT. And then we will say backslash DT sold. And this has got autocomplete. So once you start typing, um, DT AP, you see AP, then I just press tab and then presenter. And we can see that it's created a database. It's a public database. The owner is Postgres because that's who we're logged in as. And at the moment, it's just one row, which is that. So um, next, we will look at connecting to the database. And then we will insert some records. And then we will go off and start retrieving information and populating the database. So I hope this is uh, understandable so far. And this is where you can get the code from. So if you go to um slash q slash q i'm quitting the database now exits and then ah. there we go that's the link for the markdown so i'll leave that with you github.com igh so go to my github page and then you'll find ebay underscore api underscore postgres and then look for the markdown for Postgres setup MD and then you can copy and paste that and you can replicate what I've just done here. Okay, so what we've got is eBay underscore 21.py, which is the file which is doing all of the main work and it's going off to eBay and using the API key and it's extracting the live data. Um, tab one. So Tab two, SQL Connect. Um, I'm not going to write this from scratch on this video because it would primarily be a lot of copy and pasting from um, the link to my website, which I've already put up. But what it is, it's, it uses PsychoPG module, uh, pip install PsychoPG2. And it's also using, um, indirectly, it's using config parser. So I've written a file called config.py, which uses config, config parser. And config parser reads a file called database.ini. It's the preferred way of doing it because what you can then do is put your username, password, database name, host name into a text file, which is then read by the config parser. And then that makes its way across into your, um, your connect function, which is then Connection equals none. And then you say uh, parameters equals config, which is what you get from your config module, which is reading from database INI file. Um, you create a cursor object, um, and then with the cursor object, cursor object, you then execute your SQL queries. Um, and all this is a boilerplate piece of code which will just connect to the database. And if it can't connect, it will give you an error, which brings me nicely on to what I've done just now. So um, if you see this error, 
means you don't have it in PsychoPG installed. You need PsychoPG installed to allow Python to connect to the Postgres database. So once that was installed, successfully installed, don't worry about the version. If you're watching this in the future, just get the latest version, whatever it happens to be. Um, and then I run my code, which I've renamed it since. So don't pay any attention to PS underscore two. It's now called, um, it's now called SQL underscore connect.py. So when I ran it, it said connecting to the Postgres database could not translate host name. <laughs> I left out a full stop in the IP address there. So that should have been 1.9 for my Raspberry Pi. Once I'd put in the right IP address into here. So if you're connecting to a remote computer, you put in the IP address. If it's on your local area network, then it will be the, if it's the same subnet. If it's if you're running everything on your one machine, then that's local host. But if you're writing your data to a separate machine, you put in the IP address of that machine. I know host is confusing, but here host actually means remote host. I hope that makes sense. Um, so what was the next error I had? I just want to share these errors with you because if I get them, there's a chance you may see this, you may see similar. So after that, I run the script and could not connect to server connection refused. Now, unless you do the steps that I'm about to show, you will also get the same message. It says, is the server running on host 1.9? and accepting connections on port. Don't worry about the port because that's the default port. You don't need to worry about ports here. Um, the problem was, which I'll show you, um, you need to edit a couple of config files and I had to edit also another, so I had to edit one file to allow connections from any IP address. And then I also had to edit another file to say, um, allow connections from anywhere and don't worry about SSL. And then my final error that I had was um, <laughs> the code. I reused my code and in my previous code, I was using a database called suppliers. Here, my database is called eBay. So you then have to go back up here and change. I had suppliers in there because it was an old file. So change that to eBay, which I showed just now how to create the database called eBay. Um, and finally, once it runs successfully, um, you can probably see Postgres database version, Postgres database version. So that, that's printing here from the successful uh, print statement here after we've got a connection, but before we execute any select statement, and it's not selecting anything because it's just boilerplate code. Um, what it is printing is um, DB version, which is what we're getting there. And as you can see, it's running on Raspberry and Raspberry Pi, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'll leave that there. All the codes on GitHub. And um, I've also put a markdown file with all of the errors that I got and the fixes for them and a link to the article that you can read also. Um, next. The third file, which I've also written today, is sold prices. Um, and just while I've still got the output on the screen, I'll let you see the output of the sold prices file. Um, what it is, is I've reverse engineered the sold prices eBay page and reconstructed the query parameters and the headers and using the requests module um don't need that anymore we're actually i've um, i've been looking for grandstand 4600 consoles it's a really good one to search for because you only get about six or ten results which is perfect for testing um that's the is that the netlock i believe it's the, the, the netlock or it's the um it's the base url Headers, so I got headers from the browser tools, right click inspect. Parameters, so the parameters, I had to take the URL and basically 
this might um, break it down into uh, key value pairs key value and that took quite a long time but it had to be done so once that finally ran that was when I got this as the result and what I did was just to test I said uh, requests dot get and then I used that URL which was uh, the base URL plus the headers plus the parameters and then print res.url which is what it's done here and not only has it printed it but when I follow the link do you want to open it yes please um, the first time I ran it I had an error and I was getting a capture um, but that was because I hadn't sent all of the query string parameters correctly and all of the headers um, you can't just send the user agent you need to send all the, re the others as well um, so here, I don't know if you're not familiar with this screen, you see all of the prices are in green. And that was actually the winning bid. So I'm going to be caught, although it sounds counterintuitive, I'm going to be calling the sold prices, the, the bids, as in the winning bids. Um, so we've got, yeah, six or seven results there. So that is pretty good, I think. And from there, we will then go and start editing the SQL Connect to insert some values. We will make eBay 21 use the SQL Connect method and we will be passing into it um, variables that we have extracted from the API call. So if you'd like to see that, let's begin. Okay, so let's just do a recap on where we are so far. What we've got is we've got eBay21.py, SQL Connect, and sold prices. So the eBay21 is the one that we started with, which collects the information from eBay, the live listings using the finding API. SQL Connect.py is the one which does our connections to Postgres SQL database, which we're working on at the moment. And sold prices py will be the one which extracts sold information from the uh from this completed listings. Now I know I said I wasn't going to use beautiful soup or anything like that, but it appears we're gonna to have to we're gonna to have to use that to extract extract the completed items because of the fact that eBay no longer provide a completed items like API. So in SQL Connect what I've just done is I've added in these lines which will query the sold data table in the eBay database and it will return any rows and print those rows to the screen to the terminal and also what I've done is I've removed the if name equals main because this file needs to be called by eBay underscore 21. So all we do here is we put connect at the end after we've um, fetched the data, we've passed it, and then we'll use connect. And then within connect, we will need to add some additional code to actually insert the variables from the collected information into the database. So let's just run this not this, this one, and let's just see what we get. And I've taken the liberty of inserting, <laughs> there we go. I forgot that you can't run it from terminal because it needs a keyword. So let's do Python eBay underscore 21 PY. And we were looking for grandstand 4,600. And there we go. So don't be misled by that. We haven't coded that yet. What I've actually done is I've gone into the table and I've just inserted four records. I've made up some information. Um, so what we've got now is we've got, um, we've got eBay underscore 21, which is going off to eBay and getting this information from the live listings using the finding API. And once it's done that, it's going to the, Postgres database and getting the sold, <laughs> the fake sold information. So I hope that's, that makes sense. Okay, so what we've got is eBay underscore 21.py, which is the file which is doing all of the main work. 
and it's going off to eBay and using the API key and it's extracting the live data. Um, tab one. So tab two, SQL Connect. Um, I'm not going to write this from scratch on this video because it would primarily be a lot of copy and pasting from um, the link to my website, which I've already put up. But what it is, it's, it uses PsychoPG module, uh, pip install PsychoPG2. And it's also using, um, indirectly, it's using config parser. So I've written a file called config.py, which uses config config parser and config parser reads a file called database.ini it's the preferred way of doing it because what you can then do is put your username password database name host name into a text file which is then read by the config parser and then that makes its way across into your um your connect function which is then connection equals none and then you say uh, parameters equals config which is what you get from your config module, which is reading from database INI file. Um, you create a cursor object. Um, and then with the cursor object, cursor object, you then execute your SQL queries. Um, and all this is a boilerplate piece of code, which will just connect to the database. And if it can't connect, it will give you an error, which brings me nicely on to what I've done just now. So um if you see this error it means you don't have it installed psycho pg installed you need psycho pg installed to allow python to connect to the postgres database so once that was installed successfully installed don't worry about the version if you're watching this in the future just get the latest version whatever it happens to be um, and then i ran my code which i've renamed it since so don't pay any attention to ps underscore two. It's now called, um, it's now called SQL underscore connect.py. So when I ran it, it said connecting to the Postgres database could not translate host name. <laughs> I left out a full stop in the IP address there. So that should have been 1.9 for my Raspberry Pi. Once I'd put in the right IP address into here. So if you're connecting to a remote computer, you put in the IP address. If it's on your local area network, then it will be the, if it's the same subnet. If it's if you're running everything on your one machine, then that's local host. But if you're writing your data to a separate machine, you put in the IP address of that machine. I know host is confusing, but here host actually means remote host. Hope that makes sense. Um, so what was the next error I had? I just want to share these errors with you because if I get them, there's a chance you may see this, you may see similar. So after that, I run the script and could not connect to server. Connection refused. Now, unless you do the steps that I'm about to show, you will also get the same message. It says, is the server running on host 1.9? and accepting connections on port. Don't worry about the port, because that's the default port. You don't need to worry about ports here. Um, the problem was, which I'll show you, um, you need to edit a couple of config files, and I had to edit also another, so I had to edit one file to allow connections from any IP address, and then I also had to edit another file to say, um, allow connections from anywhere and don't worry about SSL. And then my final error that I had was um, <laughs> the code. I reused my code, and in my previous code, I was using a database called Suppliers. Here, my database is called eBay. So you then have to go back up here and change. I had Suppliers in there because it was an old file. So change that to eBay, which I showed just now how to create the database called eBay. Um, and finally, once it runs successfully, um, you can probably see Postgres database version, Postgres database version. So that that's printing here from the successful 
uh, print statement here after we've got a connection but before we execute any select statement and it's not selecting anything because it's just boilerplate code um, what it is printing is um, db version which is what we're getting there and as you can see it's running on raspberry and raspberry pi blah 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 um, so i'll leave that there all the codes on github and um, I've also put a markdown file with all of the errors that I got and the fixes for them and a link to the article that you can read also. Um, next, the third file, which I've also written today, is sold prices. Um, and just while I've still got the output on the screen, I'll let you see the output of the sold prices file. Um, what it is, is... I've reverse engineered the sold prices eBay page and reconstructed the query parameters and the headers and using the requests module. Um, don't need that anymore. We're actually, I've, um, I've been looking for Grandstand 4600 consoles. It's a really good one to search for because you only get about six or ten results, which is perfect for testing. Um, that's the... Is that the netlock? I believe it's the, the, the netlock. Or it's the, um, it's the base URL. Headers. So I've got headers from the browser tools. Right-click inspect. Parameters. So the parameters, I had to take the URL and basically... this. Um, break it down into uh, key, value, pairs, key, value. And that took quite a long time, but it had to be done. So once that finally ran, that was when I got this as the result. And what I did was just to test, I said uh, requests.get, and then I used that URL, which was uh, the base URL, plus the headers, plus the parameters and then print res.url, which is what it's done here. And not only has it printed it, but when I follow the link, do you want to open it? Yes, please. Um, the first time I ran it, I had an error and I was getting a capture, um, but that was because I hadn't sent all of the query string parameters correctly and all of the headers. Um, you can't just send the user agent, you need to send all the, re the others as well. Um, so here, I don't know if you're not familiar with the screen, you see all of the prices are in green. And that was actually the winning bid. So I'm going to be caught, although it sounds counterintuitive, I'm going to be calling the sold prices, the, the bids, as in the winning bids. Um, so we've got, yeah, six or seven results there. So that is pretty good, I think. And from there... We will then go and start editing the SQL Connect to insert some values which we get from, sorry, we will make eBay21 use the SQL Connect method and we will be passing into it um, variables that we have extracted from the API call. So if you'd like to see that, let's begin. Okay, so back on the Raspberry Pi, which is the database server, we need to do something. We need to go back into the database and we need to modify our eBay, AP, eBay database API sold table. So if we do sudo, Dash I dash U postgres PSQL and then we need to forward slash C connect to eBay now connected to the eBay database and then if we just do if we just describe our API data and just to um just to begin with, I created this table, which has got description, rice, postage, time left. So I made that without actually referring to
to the API documentation and my code. So what I'm going to do is actually drop that table, which means get rid of it. And let's create a new new table. So create table. I'll do it the proper way in capital. So the table will be the table will be called API data. And we want to have um, so we first off you put the column name and then you put the variable type. So let's put um, which order shall we do it? I've kind of got the code in the wrong order because I got price first. Um, let's be a bit more logical and let's use description. Uh, which is item dot title. Right, let's call it what they call it. So title title is var car. Let's give it a hundred characters. I hope that's enough. And then we want What's the next one called? Let's just scroll across a little bit. Uh, current current price. Current price. And that'll be money. And then buy it now available. Uh, let's call it buy now available hmm just call it by now and that can be money no it can't sorry that will be var uh, 50 and then country so then we want Country, and that can be far, uh, so like 35, should be enough. Then end time, end underscore time, and that needs to be time. We might have to come back and format, or we'll need to think about how we format the time. And then and URL, and that can be var car, not var chat, var car, 100. In fact, I don't even know if 100 would be enough, will it? Uh, it should be. And then closing brackets, and values. Ah, we're creating a table. Uh, so then closing brackets and then we just need to do the semicolon and it's created a table so if we do slash, uh, backslash d api data there we go title current price so as you can see what we've got here now matches what we've got here and that's the whole point why i dropped the original table because the original table i wasn't thinking clearly and i just created a table from guesswork so moral of the story is consult your code and make sure you have the identical fields in your columns in your database to what you have in your code and vice versa okay so what we need to do next is we need to get these uh these keywords from our uh, print statement we need to get those into variables that we can then pass into the database. So what we're going to do is, in fact, let's copy that, paste it in there, and we can hopefully just say something like um, title equals item title. And um, 
Right, so let's bring back up the um, Raspberry Pi just for reference. And um, title current underscore price. It's not going to be any use when we match up this data from what we'll say is our left hand table this isn't going to actually make any difference if we've got watches with our right hand table because that's our right hand table will be the completed completed auction so um let's just see that and check if the code still runs before we make any before we do anything else yes it does which we expected it to do so we've now got our variables um, and what we need to then do is we need to pass those to our connect function which will then insert them into the database. Okay, so we want to do things the proper way so let's consult psychopg tutorial on the postgres.org site and what I wanted to do was make sure I was inserting multiple rows in the correct manner. Um, obviously you don't want to keep opening and closing the database for each iteration of your loop. So all we've got here is an example using a tuple of dictionaries and that's exactly what I want to do. And you could easily insert all three rows, rows within the dictionary by using execute many. And then you just have to have the placeholders and you pass it the name of your dictionary at the end. The cur execute many statement will automatically iterate through the dictionary and execute the insert query for each row. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So this tutorial, very good. So what have we done? Well, <laughs> sneak preview. Um, what I did was I had an error. I had an error where the URLs were longer than 130 characters. Let me show you that. So. Um, Value too long for type character varying 100. I didn't actually know which one it was, but I had a pretty good guess it would be the URL. So um, we go back to uh, go back to the pie. And what I did was I just dropped the table because there's no sensible data in it yet. So I dropped the table. Um, you can actually just use the up arrow and drop table API data. So it's dropped a table. So if I do select star from API, see autocomplete doesn't work because the table doesn't exist. Um, so then what we want to do is want to create it. And you can see I've just called up the previous create table command and I've just changed 100 to 130. So that's 130 characters in the URL create table. So now if I run the select table command again, it exists. Good. So at the moment we've got an empty table, no rows. There we go. Title, current price, by now, country, and time URL. And what I've done so far is I've successfully inserted the data into the table. So if you want to see that in action, let's run that again. So Python eBay 21 by Grandstand 4600. So that's the keywords we're searching on from the eBay API. And there we go. That's my tuple of dictionaries. Connecting, successfully inserted, database closed. Right, let's just go back and look at the, uh, let's look at the results. And here we go. And if I do select star from, there we go. We've got some input. And that is live, live listings. Um, because I'm doing it every command line, it doesn't actually display it in the nicest way. I'm sure there's a, what I really need to do would be actually to install um, the Windows, the GUI display manager or whatever it's called and then connect to the pie from the windows machine and view it in a nice nice admin console but there you go we've got four rows and the code let's go back and look at the python code so i had to change quite a few things and it wouldn't have made good viewing so 
um, I've had to do it behind the scenes and come back and show you what I've done. So I've deleted all the print statements from eBay 21, the main API Python code. And we're in the fetch method. And what I've done is I've created an empty list. And inside the for loop, you need to create an empty dictionary. And the empty dictionary needs to be indented because each iteration, you create a new dictionary and then you append the new dictionary to a list. So you end up with a list of dictionaries. And then at the end, I've just converted the list of dictionaries to a tuple. And then I, um, I run the insert function using the data, so the API data, which is the tuple of dictionaries. And if you remember, the API underscore INS is what I've imported here. Yeah. API underscore INS is in SQL Connect, and that's being passed the API data tuple of dictionaries. And this is what's doing all the work. So let's, uh, Let's just run through that. So I had a dropped date because um, I was getting in a muddle with the date. So for the time being, I've left that date. I'll go back and put that in. So just for uh, troubleshooting, I was putting in um, insert. So okay, execute many insert into API data. So that's the table name. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the column names in the database. And these are the values. So these are the about the placeholders and they will be inserting the data or the values from the dictionary. So for each dictionary in the tuple, this is going to get filled out and it's execute many is going to execute it and then do the next one and execute it. So execute many runs once. So you can do all of that and then just do one commit. Whereas if you'd done this inside the for loop, you'd have to keep opening, committing, closing your connection, and that's not very efficient. So um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. And um, we've now got API data from eBay. We've inserted it into our SQL database. That's got us a nice database full of information from an eBay live listings. Okay, next, let's get the sold prices. Yeah, so I had to reverse engineer the sold prices. If you go to the browser, you can do an advanced search. You do advanced search on Grandstand 4600, then copy and paste that URL. Once you've got that URL, you can then reverse engineer it. So what you then do is you split it up into all of its keyword value or key value pairs for your parameters to pass. And you pass parameters as params as params, headers as headers. So that's the, that's the keyword arguments that you pass to requests.get along with your URL. So your base URL, I should say. So your base URL is that, which is the first part of the text file, the URL in the text file. Um, headers get all of those I don't know which ones are superfluous but best to just put them all in because it works um, so for the parameters it's just laborious process of splitting up uh, let's just show you that so what I was doing was everything so the equals is what separates the keyword from the value so uh, for instance here underscore ex kw is your keyword and then equals am, ampersand and then you'd say because there was nothing between the equals and the ampersand then you just leave it empty so you see what i did there on 922 um so lh sold equals that's a keyword and one is a value see there on line 24 and again you underscore udlo equals and then there's nothing, it's just the next ampersand for the next lot. So then you do keep doing that um, all the way down until you get to underscore FOSRP is your last keyword and one is your last value. So that here 
needs to be converted from that, which is the URL copied and pasted from the browser from my advanced search. That's all your params and the params is your variable name. So that could be called um, golf clubs or it could be called Mr. Blobby and then that would be the name of the variable that goes there. Params and headers you can't change. So all I'm doing here now is printing. So if we run that. There we go. And you see we've got a URL which we can click on. Those are all the sold prices. So there we go. Next thing I would need to do then is to extract the HTML. So it's available as HTML on this occasion and extract those values and put those into the database. Okay, so I'm looking at the sold prices uh, and they're the ones in green you can see here as we've looked at already so just as a mvp minimum viable product i'm going to extract the descriptions and the winning bid value and as you can see um i've got nordvpn open here and i expect you can guess why <laughs> despite my best efforts i do sometimes get a capture message so um, yeah, enough said about that. This is demonstration only. Don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to, um, let me bring back up VS Code. If I can find it. It's a problem with having too many screens open, isn't it? I should probably get one of those really big wide ones. Are they any good? I think, don't you have to adjust the resolution otherwise the writing goes really small I don't know if you can add a comment about whether the wide screens are better or if you have three monitors I don't know um, this is some quite crude beautiful soup code so I'm just saying find the unordered list and then for all the list items in the in the unordered list just go through and find these classes so that class is what's getting the description and that class is what's getting the bid the sold bid in bold in green um, and then I've had to do a bit of a work around it just to say um, description and bid if there is a description, because some of them are coming back as none. Um, this is not good code, by the way, but it works. <laughs> right, so if I run this, I'll just demonstrate it really. Um, so this is what you saw earlier. Requests, beautiful soup, URL, base URL. Then we've got headers, parameters that I showed you. Um, and then soup equals beautiful soup, response.txt, HTML parser. Um, I'm just printing the response and the response URL. Um, it's useful to print the response URL because if that ch if you get response 200, you think everything's fine, but in actual fact, you get a response 200 even if you're getting an anti-capture message. So you need to actually print the response.url and then you can see in the URL, you'll get something relating to capture. Right, so um, this is my clunky code. Don't copy it, but I'm just picking out the two variables that I want at the moment. So um, yeah, I'm just going to demonstrate that and then we'll move on and then we'll insert it in the database and we'll do our database joins and that'll be it. So yeah, we go. So response 200, that's the good URL, i.e. not the anti-capture one. And then we've got six descriptions and six winning bid values. So um, all that remains now is to insert those values into the sold table. Um, so let's add the code to do that and then we will do our join. Okay, so um, I'm in SQL Connect and what I've just done, all I've done is I've copied and pasted the API insert function. I've just pasted it down here and I'm going to call it sold ins, sold insert as opposed to API ins, which is API insert. So the data from either API is called API ins 
or sold is called sold ins. And um, yeah, so that needs to get changed to sold data. I'll come back and change these in a minute because these need a bit of attention. And um, yeah, the other thing I need to do is within sold prices, I need to effectively do the same as I did on eBay 21. But this one, this, this is going to run a standalone, really, because you're only ever going to need to run it occasionally just to update your database of, um, of, of sold prices. So uh, sold ins. So if you're still watching, congratulations. This has been quite a lot of code. And um, yeah, it's not perfect, but we're pretty near getting something that's working. So um, let's just do select from sold data. And I've just emptied the sold data table. Um, but if you want to see if it's there, we'll just do sold data. And there we go. It's not pretty, but it's there. So um, right, let's just move that out of the way. And what I'm going to do is run the code now. So I've just indented this whole block because I had an issue with, I think I'm getting duplicates. So I've said that if this, if there's no description, then um, obviously it won't run this, but if there's a description, then it does run it and it appends it to a dictionary and then it changes, sorry, it appends a dictionary of sold data to a list called sold data. Then I convert that list to a tuple to keep it the same format as the other one, which runs with execute many, which I showed earlier in the video. So if you're ready to see it working, let's just run um, sold prices. In fact, it doesn't need to be all right. So this is this doesn't need the keyword because the keyword is actually in keyword, or the value is uh, the keyword is actually a value here. Look. So if you want to copy this code and use it for your own purposes, then to look up sold prices for a racing car, then you would just do racing plus car. And that would go here where I've highlighted that. So, all right, let's run it. So code runner, code runner is an extension. So if you don't have that in VS code, then you just need to install the extension. And there's some nice output there. And computer game working order. So it's got the name, the bid, description and the bid the description and the bid so that all looks pretty good successfully inserted into the table so it's the same success message as with ebay 21 and if we go and bring back the postgres server select from sold data and lo and behold we've got five entries so those five entries match what what you would get if you went onto the ebay page and did advanced search and then you looked for the sold items so we've got a we've got a description in a bid in our sold table. So then if we do if we describe our so it says it's inserted some data of the current listings. So these are the current listings that API data. So API is the current listing on the live production eBay website. And then if we go back to here and run select from API data again. Okay, well, that appears to have worked. Select star from API data. We've now got all database of, these are the live listings. So that's why there's many more. So there's 12, 12 live listings, sold data, five against 12. So what we need to do, this is where we're just gonna do some basic SQL joining. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, um, select from the left hand table, which is API data. And we want to select where any of the current listings are less than sold listings, the, the most expensive sold listing. Okay, so I think um, just to wrap this up now, we've extracted data from live items on eBay. We've extracted sold data from eBay. We've got two tables and with our two tables, we can do comparisons. So we can compare sold prices against current live auction prices. Um, I'll just show you some kind of um, example. I'll select distinct current price description from API data. So from, from the live data, we'll select where the current price is less 
then sold data bids bids in the sold data uh, so all this is just really example of um, comparing between tables uh, there you go so we can see that um, there's current live auctions and there's currently one for 6.99 and one for 15 pounds on the live auction um, anything else is already above that or it's probably a buy it now with a very high price so i'll just show you if we do select stuff from and you can see uh 15 65 39 6.99 so that's cheap 15 is cheap 6.99 is cheap 15 is cheap um deleting duplicates yet with my code so what you would probably want to do is an extra bit of code which would potentially give you the option to delete your tables each time you want to run this so if you only wanted to run this once a week or once a month or whatever you could choose to um, delete your table and create it again from scratch which is quite a common thing to want to do um, i won't demonstrate that here because i think you've probably seen enough but um yeah we've we've done a lot we've extracted code from any particular category um use well not category keywords so we've been using keywords and the finding api and then we've used so we've used the ebay sdk to access the api we've also used postgres sql and we've used psycho pg2 um, to interact with a sql database using python code and i hope this has been really interesting it's taken quite a lot of work so if you want to do the old thumbs up and subscribe that'd be much appreciated because i don't know how much longer i can keep doing this without uh, <laughs> any financial reward um anyway enough of, enough begging from me i'm sure you've all got things to do and thanks for watching again leave comments <laughs> most of you would just say install pg admin and that's fair enough so um thanks for watching subscribe leave a comment leave a thumbs up and just thanks for watching thank you very much